The Dog Files is proud to introduce our awesome new sponsor, JustForPooches.com. This great online pet boutique has the latest in toys, designer collars, all natural pet treats, and so much more. Just make sure to use coupon code DOGFILES to get 10% off every order. Only your support will help us to continue putting out the greatest dog show on the web. We cannot do it without you. We are so excited to present our new four-part series, The Dog Files Hit the Heartland, a series that was only made possible by the generous donations of Dog Files fans like you. In our first episode, we meet a group of people working selflessly at a South Dakota animal shelter to give dogs, big and small, something everyone deserves, a second chance. My name is Rosie Quinn, and I am the founder, director, and humane officer for Second Chance Rescue Center. The big issue we see in South Dakota on the eastern half of the state is inadequate shelter, food, water. We get calls on that every day. All humane officers or animal control officers have that one rescue or thing that they've done that sticks with them forever. Mine is Gabe. Gabe was a German Shepherd puppy. His collar had grown, grown into his neck and the skin had grown around the collar. It stunk of infection. I made it back here to Sioux Falls in just a little over 10 minutes to get him to the hospital. Gabe is the one dog that I fell in love with and saved. We're going through their pre-adoption exam where we evaluate them and see if there's any obvious things that need to be addressed. Um, they came from a breeder down um, in Lincoln County here in, in South Dakota. He just couldn't utilize these dogs anymore because they weren't producing for him. Your breeders throughout South Dakota in the Midwest consider their, your bigger breeders consider their dogs um, livestock. They're not considered an, uh, domestic animals. Unsuspecting people who buy these puppies don't see where they came from and they don't see the environment of the moms and the dads. We're giving them their distemper parvo and parrot influenza vaccination and we're also going to warm them with strongid. He claims he vaccinated them a year ago but he didn't have any proof of that. It's hard to say if they're good or bad breeders but generally a responsible breeder vaccinates their pets, has them checked regularly by a veterinarian. They breed to improve the breed and I'm not sure what his setup was but so he cared enough about them at least to surrender them to us, which is better than just disposing of them himself. Well, I came out here today to find my dog a friend. I'm looking for a good tempered uh, male dog for her to play with. Her name is Banjo. Maybe I'll come up with another instrument name for him. Second chance does not euthanize her space. If an animal comes, it stays till we can find it a home. Well, we have a program where you can take them home for a couple days and try them, make sure that you're ready for a puppy. That way, you know, if it doesn't work out, they get a little vacation. If it does work out, you get a new dog. I, I think that would be the best, yeah. Okay. So I truly believe that there is a person for every animal and an animal for every person. All finished up with the uh, short bit of paperwork. I'm gonna take them home, introduce them to my Staffordshire. I think they'll probably get along just great. My name is Kim Johnson. I work in the Sioux Falls City Annex building. This building contains the dogs that city animal control officers pick up. We scan them to see if they're chipped. A lot of problems you run into that with is that people don't get those registered. We make every attempt to find out who the owners are. A lot of people um, either just don't look for their animals or don't know where to look. 
We have some people coming in with a litter of puppies. We agreed to take them in and help her out. We got boys and girls. Both, a little bit of both. Over the last, I'd say, four or five months, our animal intake for abandonments has gone up a lot. People are losing their homes. They can't take animals into apartments. We try and take them if we can't. We tell them we can't take them because we're full, but they just go and leave them anyway. We've had animals that have sat here five, six months and somebody will come in and all of a sudden it's the perfect pet. We speak for animals, great and small, who can't speak for themselves. We gotta do whatever we can to help them. They're helpless creatures. As far as I'm concerned, we see miracles here every day.